Hello, thank you for visiting the FieldFox Network Analyzer channel. My name is Ted Ayers, and I'm an application engineer at Keysight Technologies Technical Contact Center in Englewood, Colorado. Today, I will be demonstrating the FieldFox N9918A 26.5 GHz cable and antenna tester equipped with options 208 and 302. The purpose of this video is to show you how you can use FieldFox with option 208 to measure conversion loss on a frequency converter. The diagram shown here presents the basic idea behind measuring frequency converters using FieldFox option 208, which enables you to make frequency offset measurements using a power sensor, or FOPS. In this mode, port 1 of the instrument provides a source signal to the frequency converter's input port. The device under test performs the function of translating the input, or RF frequency signal, to the desired output, or IF frequency signal, by mixing a local oscillator tone with the RF input signal. A key site or Agilent USB power sensor is controlled by the FieldFox to act as a detector and it measures power at the frequency converter's IF output port. It's important to note that this approach is intended only for measurement of frequency converters, not standalone mixers. The idea is that frequency converters have filtering and possibly matching networks built in, which make it possible to make this measurement without more advanced error correction techniques. If you need to measure standalone mixers, Keysight has more accurate approaches, such as scalar mixer calibration, which is available in Keysight ENA and PNA series network analyzers. In today's setup, I will measure conversion loss on a frequency converter, which is built with the following components. A 3 dB input matching pad, a 10.24 GHz bandpass filter, a microwave mixer, a 780 MHz narrow bandpass filter, and finally, a 3 dB output matching pad. The combined assembly was also measured on a Keysight PNAX, and it showed a passband conversion loss in the neighborhood of 17 dB. The microwave radio frequency, or RF, input port will be stimulated with a minus 5 dBm signal at a center frequency of 10.24 GHz over a 600 MHz span. The frequency converter's local oscillator, or LO, port will be stimulated with plus 10 dBm 9.46 GHz CW carrier signal. The swept intermediate frequency, or IF, output port will provide a translated signal centered at 780 MHz and will have the same 600 MHz span as our input. Basically, there are four steps to making a frequency converter measurement with option 208. 1. Calibrate the RF source for level input signal power with the USB power sensor. 2. Connect the RF source to the frequency converter's input port. 3. Connect the power sensor to the frequency converter's output port. And 4. Measure conversion gain, or loss, expressed as a negative gain. In this picture of my test setup, we have the N9918A cable and antenna tester, which includes option 302 for Keysight USB power sensor support, as well as option 208, which provides frequency offset using power sensor measurements. Be aware that both option 302 and 208 are required for this measurement. An external USB power sensor, such as the U2002A, is also required. The RF output port, or port 1, of the FieldFox is connected to my frequency converter's RF input signal port. The U2002A USB power sensor is connected to my device's IF output signal port. A MXG series analog signal generator provides a CW carrier signal, which I use as the LO source in my frequency converter. This close-up picture shows the stages of my frequency converter. In this video, I will show you FieldFox remote display software this free application allows you to control all functions of the FieldFox just as if you were physically poking the actual front panel buttons on the instrument. I will use the FieldFox remote display to make it easier for you to see the FieldFox's front panel hard key and soft key entries. The software lets me display front panel clicks to show red dots where I clicked. The hard keys or buttons are the ones that have words, numbers, and symbols written on them. The soft keys are the ones directly below the instrument's display and they will change depending upon the context of screen menus. I will use a mouse pointer on my PC to remotely control the instrument which is connected via LAN. The instrument's display is being updated in real time as we proceed. Now then, let's begin. Before beginning any measurement, it's a good idea to preset the instrument to get it into a known state. So I poke the preset hard key followed by the preset factory soft key. Now the instrument presets. 
Next, we press the mode hard key, followed by pressing the power meter USB sensor soft key. A U2002A USB power sensor is connected between FieldFox's USB port and the IF signal output port of my frequency converter. Now we'll get into setting up the instrument to measure the device's conversion loss. Notice that the power meter mode defaults to a CW measurement. We look for the sweep type soft key and then we set it from CW to swept. For the moment, Ignore the error message, as we still need to make settings that will work for the, our U2002A power sensor. Note that the frequency limits of the measurement are determined by the field fox for port 1 and the USB power sensor for the frequency converter's output port. We will set the port 1 source signal to be centered at 10.24 GHz over a 600 MHz span. So we set source center to 10.24 gigahertz. Then we set span to 600 megahertz. Notice that the error message went away. There are a few ways to enter the frequency plan for the converter on the field box. I think the easiest way is to simply use the offset calculator. So we go to the more soft key and then we poke the offset calculator soft key. In this menu, I just need to enter my converter's output frequency using the RX center soft key. So I enter 780 megahertz. Then I poke the calculate offset soft key. After that, press done. Observe that the Frequency offset at the bottom of the graticule is calculated to be negative 9.46 gigahertz. Next, press the sweep hard key and then select the power setup soft key. Note that the source is enabled and we'll set the source nominal power to minus 5 dBm. With that entered, we then press the back soft key. Next, we press the bandwidth hard key and observe that tolerance and max readings default to one tenth of a dB and four readings respectively. We'll stay with those settings. For this measurement's calibration, it's important to have the USB power sensor zeroed, so we press the cal hard key. Notice the instruction to disconnect the power sensor from any signal source. After I do that, I press the external zero soft key. Upon doing so, we see a zeroing message on the right side of the display while the USB power sensor is zeroed. And it's important to note that no power flows into the sensor during this part of the procedure. So the power sensor should have nothing connected to the RF input connector while zeroing. An amber light on the USB power sensor is lit during the zeroing. This process takes about 20 seconds or so. The zeroing indicator goes away when the process is complete. After zeroing the power sensor, press the measure hard key. Now we want to perform a source power calibration and normalization, so we select the source power measure soft key. Similar to a normalization cal, this selection guides you through the following steps to make a port 1 source power measurement at the calibration reference plane, and then we store that data trace into memory. The FieldFox screen tells you what to do. I follow the diagram on the screen and mate the power sensor's input to the port 1 cable connector using a short female to female adapter. I then press the measure soft key. FieldFox controls the power sensor to measure the signal at port 1 calibration reference plane. FieldFox controls the power sensor to measure the signal at the port 1 calibration reference plane. The FieldFox source is adjusted to provide a flat minus 5 dBm signal over the RF input frequency range, ensuring that power flowing into the frequency converter under test is what we set. Now that the source power has been measured, I will press the source data to memory soft key to store that data into FieldFox memory. Afterwards, I press the done key.
After the calibration, the measurement reference plane is established. Now I will reconnect port 1 and the USB power sensor to the frequency converters RF and IF ports. Now that the source power data has been pushed into FieldFox memory, we are ready to make the desired conversion loss measurement. We'll use the gain soft key to do this. Be aware that this feature is not available until the source data is stored in memory. Gain displays the ratio of the output power to the source power as stored in the memory trace. And a negative number for the gain measurement is the frequency converter's conversion loss. With the DUT reconnected, I pressed the gain soft key. Finally, I auto scale the measurement using the scale amplitude hard key and the auto scale soft key. I would like to see the conversion loss at the IF center frequency, so I use a marker to see this. The marker hard key shows the conversion loss, which is close to minus 17 dB, and that is what I expected to see. For comparison of results, I measured SC21, or forward conversion loss, on the same frequency converter after doing a scalar mixer calibration on a PNAX. This is the most accurate way to measure conversion loss on a frequency converter. I save the CSV files from the FieldFox and PNAX and compare the two by overlaying the data in an Excel plot that you see here. The PNAX has better dynamic range than FieldFox provides with the Option 208 technique. So you see some difference between the FieldFox Option 208 measurements compared to a PNAX, particularly in the reject bands. However, in the range of capability for option 208, close to the pass band, FieldFox shows very good agreement with the results on the PNAX. So if you have a frequency converter that is well filtered and well matched over its frequencies of operation, and if you need to do quick pass-fail frequency offset measurements of your converter out in the field, then consider doing it with FieldFox's option 208 frequency offset using power sensor, FOPS. Please remember, that the technique shown in this video is not recommended for measuring mixers without filtering or other broadband devices. Keysight recommends ENA and PNA network analyzers for those situations. Product information and literature for FieldFox can be found at www.keysight.com slash find slash FieldFox. Also, you can get support resources, including free software tools like FieldFox Remote Display Thanks for taking the time out of your busy day to learn about FieldFox, which puts a test bench in the palm of your hands. If you like this video, please let us know. Thanks again for watching.